Hi there, so I have quite a number of questions that I need to answer from um, some of you and what I've done is I've put together five of those questions in this video I'm going to answer them best possible way that I can and um, if you have submitted a question that I haven't answered submit it again please and I will answer it. Now the first one I've got was from Abe AIJ how to find the correct decision maker when you are still in the research phase prior to a call. There's three ways you can do this. One, go to their website. Under their website and the about section, if you go into the about section, quite often they have meet with the team. Have a look there if they've got it there. If it's not on there, go to LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you can search the company. When you search the company, there is information on the people who work in that company and you can go into it that way. Um, Otherwise, you know, another thing that I do quite often is go back onto their website, look at news. If they've got news pages, sometimes it shows the director's names there. Failing all of that, just pick up the phone and speak to the nearest person to them. Get any name of LinkedIn or the website get through to that person and find out more especially if it's a no names policy then you can use social media or their website get a name get through have a discussion because from that point you can start making waves into that organization okay there is a video um the video is for um preparation tips that's on my uh, channel so if you look for cold calling two preparation tips uh the description it's uh sorry the link is in the description below so you can just click on that if you like. Uh, second one, uh, hi Shia, what kind of marketing do you do? Uh, do you send out marketing emails? And that was from an amazing person called John Buffalo, who is 99. And I salute you, sir. Thank you for the question, but you're still out there doing it. It's a great example of somebody who is um, pretty much saying you can never be too old to learn. So um, marketing in terms of be marketing outlook, you've got to remember marketing is a different role, um, but connected to sales. You're not a marketing person. You're not about um, mass media. However, you will have to do an element of marketing to tell people that you do exist and that you're there um, and you have a product and you have something to provide. So if you want to do marketing, then the obvious channels are the social media channels, um, email marketing. Now, obviously, we can't go face to face networking at the moment, but those other channels, there's plenty of them. And if you're going to use them, that's great, but just use them in the appropriate way. So each of the different channels to market, whether it's um, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, or if you're using Facebook, or perhaps you're using TikTok for business, but whichever one it is, they all require a different kind of approach. Learn what kind of approach works best from the social media experts that are available everywhere. Ask them what is the best way that you can approach or adapt your approach to those media channels. Now, I've written an article about how it doesn't work if you send an, a, a, a sort of an email on direct marketing, but you use the same content on that email for LinkedIn or something like that, they don't work like that. You really do have to adapt them for the different types of platforms. So marketing, email marketing, in answer to your question, John, email marketing is fine so long as you do it in the right way. I've written an article about this on my website. Again, the description it's in the description below the link is in the description below okay the um, third one is how do I stop decision makers from saying they don't need my services before they even know anything about them okay so there's no silver bullet answer to this one because it, I really have to hear what you're saying but my advice to you is would you listen to you would you listen to what you're saying? Perhaps you're pitching too much too quickly on the phone um, and perhaps you're not even giving thought to who they are and what they're about. And, you know, it, I always on my cold calls, if you watch mine back, you'll see that one of the first things I always say is, I just want to learn a little bit more about your situation or I just want to learn a little bit more about what your sales development plans are for your teams first. 
And so I'm putting them first and I'm also handing over control to them so they can control the direction or the flow of that conversation. Because what I want to know is which bit of what I was going to say is more, most relevant to them. So let them pick it. You know, step in gently. Again, you don't have to just vomit everything at them, and which I call verbal diarrhea in my book if you haven't already read it. Okay, uh, there is a video for that. Uh, what to say to decision makers. Again, link is in the description. Number four, Jamie Louie. Great um, name, by the way. Asked a great question about accents. Do accents matter in cold calling? Well, I think they shouldn't, but they do. Unfortunately, there are certain associations with certain accents because, like everything, there was a fad of things happening and um, there are overseas cold callers who make calls who immediately are recognised as a cold caller. And so when that happens, if you're a B2C and a consumer picking up the phone, then the likelihood is you're going to know straight away from the accent that that's a cold caller and you're probably going to switch off straight away and possibly from bad experiences, not down to the cold caller, it's not their fault, it's the way they've been trained and I've said this before, it is the cold calling centres and their responsibility to train you effectively, to have effective conversations, to help you to relate to people overseas. A lot of accents do work in a really positive way. So what I would say to you though, if you want your accent to work for you, then embrace it and use it positively. If you've got an accent that does not belong to the country that you're calling and you're asked about it, have a conversation. It's a great rapport builder, so why not use that as a conversation builder? And um, also, when somebody asks you, are you calling from India or are you calling from the Philippines or are you calling from you know, Australia or wherever, don't deny it. Talk about it. Use it as a talking point so you can really use it to your advantage. There is a video that I've put out about this called Anti-Racist Call Calling. It's not about racism. It's about embracing your accent and coming across fresh and being able to use that positively. Okay. And finally, number five, why can't I get a meeting with the decision maker? This was a question from Marcel. Thank you for that question. Um, I know that I addressed it directly with you, Marcel, but I think it's a great question that um, you know a lot of other people will probably want to know the answer to as well. Listen, you know, if you're calling to sell something on the phone, fine, you can pitch it on the phone. But if you're calling to, to get a meeting so you, because you have a solution sale, which requires a little bit more interaction, a little bit more learning on your part about that customer, it means you need a meeting. Your objective on the phone is to get a meeting. So my advice to you is this less is more on the phone your your whole objective on the phone is to get them interested in you as a person and get them to think about having a further conversation with you to do that you introduce what you have slightly but your interest has to be more about them and understand them and where they want to go and then you can start to tease them about what you could talk to them about in a meeting you see, if you start pitching everything on the phone first, then why would they need a meeting with you? They've already got enough information to decide. And the funny thing is, or the irony of that is, they actually don't have enough information because they don't know what else you want to tell them. But they'll never know because they think they've got as much as they need. It's a little bit like if you go into a news agent and the, um, the, the owner of the news agent allows you to read beyond the headlines so you'd read that article that you're interested in, put the paper back, why would you buy it, right? So it's a little bit like that. But again, I refer you to the video about what to say to decision makers and that will help you. Okay, guys, thank you for those questions. Um, look, if I didn't put your question on here, then I really do apologize. Please do send your questions in again if I've missed it. I'm not ignoring you. Um, I run a couple of businesses alongside this. This is just something I do to help you. I'm not making anything from it. Um, but having said that, please do subscribe because obviously that would help as well. It would give me more encouragement to keep putting more um, stuff out here. Um, okay, so uh, thank you. Your questions were great. Um, thanks for keeping me going. Thanks for watching and I will speak to you soon. All the best.